Well, hello and welcome to a new video. So in this video, I thought it would be nice to talk about, you know, ways to get a baby to sleep. Um, because often when you want to take photos of a newborn baby, you want to take some sleeping photos. Because when they sleep, you can easily post them. And it's actually more relaxing for the baby as well, like the whole photo section. Because they hardly notice that they're being photographed. I am a big fan of natural poses, comfortable poses. Um, so yeah, most of the babies do sleep. Uh, but if they don't, what are some tips and tricks to get a baby to sleep? Well, first I'm going to photograph a newborn baby. Um, so let's first photograph and then afterwards I'm going to give you my tips and tricks. And maybe you already see some of my tips and tricks while I'm photographing the newborn baby. I never know what the baby's going to do when they come in. Today's a little boy. He was born after 37 weeks of pregnancy. He was still quite light when he was born. Um, can mean that he is bright-eyed awake, can mean that he's very sleepy, um, you never know. So yeah, let's first go to the photo shoot and then let's talk about some tips and tricks. So for today's newborn session, it is grays and blues. And this is gonna be my final decor as well. It's on the real wood um, with some blankets and I have some posing pillows underneath. Okay, so that was a very handsome and sweet little boy I photographed. Um, at the beginning, like he came in sleeping in his car seat. Uh, so we started off with some sleeping photos. I took him out of the car seat, undressed him, started photographing. Then he woke up because he was a little bit hungry. The parents already told me that it was time for his feeding when they came in. Um, but I wanted to start with some sleeping photos because he was still sleeping anyway. After his feeding, he actually fell back asleep. That might be tip number one. Uh, make sure that the baby is not hungry. Uh, don't overfeed a baby just to make him fall asleep because if he's full, he's full. You don't want him to throw up, um, get really like stomach pains because he's like over full. But if it is time for a feeding and the baby's awake, there is a chance that he might fall asleep during the feeding and then you can start photographing straight after. So what I usually do is that I get the baby already in the outfit before the feeding. Um, clean diaper, nice baby outfit, and then like wrap him in his own little blanket or one of my uh, wraps. So the wrap is already warm and we can start with that or just his own blankets because I'm not talking about step number two yet, but temperature is a big thing. This helps because then when a baby's falling asleep during a feeding, they already wear their cute little outfit and you don't have to undress them and then wake them up. So after the feeding, the parents can hold the baby up a little bit against their chest if they're still awake, maybe they can burp, and then they might fall asleep being like, you know, up so they won't throw up if you put them down on the beanbag. Uh, so they just hold them against their chest, maybe they walk around a little bit through the studio after the feeding, and then a lot of the times the baby falls asleep. Tip number two, make sure that the temperature is good in the studio, on the beanbag, in the props, not too warm, not too cold. Um, that for me, that means I have the studio set at 22 degrees Celsius, which is bearable for the parents. Uh, you know, the moms are still dealing with a lot of hormones. So if you crank it up to 27 degrees Celsius, I'll put the Fahrenheit in the screen. Um, it's gonna be hot, hot, and they're not gonna feel super comfortable. You want the parents to be real, well, no, that's another tip. So tip number two, good temperature. On the beanbag or where the baby is, it's usually a little bit warmer. I'll set my, I have like a little heater right next to me. It's usually in between, no, I'm in between the heater and the baby. So I can monitor that the baby doesn't get too warm. Of course, you can always check the neck uh, if the baby's not too warm. If you use a lot of wraps uh, to wrap the baby, if they wear like a whole outfit, you know, long sleeves, you don't want the baby to get overheated, but my my blower heater is usually set at 23 degrees, maybe 24 if it's like a baby who's very light in weight, maybe was born uh, premature and has a little bit of a harder time keeping his temperature up, I'll put it at 24, but usually it's at 23 degrees, degrees Celsius, which works for me, but I do have the babies wear their diaper, so I do cover up the diaper with either wraps or a little outfit, so they're not naked. Tip number three, um, maybe get a white noise machine. I have the orange and white baby shusher. Uh, let me get it for you. So yeah, I have this white noise machine. This is the sound that it makes. 
it's this thing, the baby sure sure. And it's not a miracle. It does say the sleep miracle. For some babies, it works really well. I always have it on. I have it on from the moment they come in until the moment they leave pretty much. It shuts up after 30 minutes by itself. So I just turn it back on. It kind of helps me to keep track of time as well because I don't look to the clock. My newborn sessions, uh, well, take two hours. I usually finish after an hour and a half. Today I finished after an hour and a half, including parent shots, everything. Um, but yeah, sometimes if I know that siblings are coming in the last 45 minutes, this kind of helps me to keep track of time as well. So yeah, white noise is great because the babies love it. They say this is the sound of the blood running through your veins. So when the baby was in the uterus, they heard this sound of the blood running through the veins of the mom. Of course, there was always a heartbeat as well, the voice of the mom. I can handle this sound as well. That's the good part about this thing. It doesn't annoy people. At least most of the people don't get annoyed by it. They actually quite like it. It makes them sleepy as well, like the parents. Um, I hardly notice it anymore. I hardly hear it anymore. So it's not like a super annoying sound. Maybe like with a heartbeat it would have been, but this is perfect for me. I love that I don't have to put my phone close to the baby. Um, Cause yeah, you can download apps as well with white noise for babies. You can have the sound of like a vacuum, uh, blow dryer, whatever. But I just like this one. I bought it like six years ago, five years ago. Uh, you can get it everywhere. So uh, white noise. Perfect. Tip number four, make sure that the parents are relaxed. So inform them well beforehand so they know what to expect. Um, inform them when they come in, you know, here's the coffee and the, the tea maker. You can grab some yourself. There's the toilet. You can sit at the table if you want to read a magazine or look through my portfolio books. You can sit right close to the beanbag in the comfortable chairs. Um, we're gonna start on this side, later go to that side, then take the parents' photos so they know what to expect. Uh, I have some cookies uh, as well, some like Wesley bars, some, I don't know, in the kitchen area so they, they can grab those. Um, beforehand, they already know how much time it's gonna take, that it's gonna be a little bit warm in the studio so they have to dress not too hot. Um, they can bring a laptop and sit at the table, but make sure they're relaxed. And I tend to keep the parents talking as well because the baby loves hearing their voices. So I talk about, you know, the pregnancy, birth, you know, how was the first week with the baby. I also wanna know if there are any like things I have to pay attention to. Maybe they had to, you know, use the um, vacuum pump to pull out the baby so I know the head can be still a little bit sensitive. If the baby was breech, maybe they wanna keep their feet in a different way than a regular, like a baby who was down facing. Uh, but you also notice that while you're posing, but it's nice to talk about it. Beforehand, if they know there's a sibling involved, I tell them there's a supermarket right across from the studio. Uh, they're not needed the first hour, so maybe one of the parents can take them outside to have a little walk. There's like a little like kids farm. I mean, they have some sheep and like a pony and they can walk there. It's like three blocks. Um, so they can come like or, or maybe sometimes the, the grandparents bring them like the last 45 minutes of the shoot. Uh, if they're here the whole time, they're inside and they're having a good time, I have a play area. So when the parents are relaxed, the babies are relaxed. But you wanna like manage their expectations. So beforehand, I sent them like uh, several photos. I have a video about that as well, asking them which color schemes they like. So the colors they like are already ready when they come in. Um, and they know that what I'm doing is what they want me to do. I also tell them what to bring as far as like a blanket to keep the baby warm. Um, that's pretty much all I need to bring. Like regular clothes, diapers, something to feed the baby. But um, yeah, it helps really when the parents are relaxed. Tip number five, um, it's maybe like picking the right time for the shoot. So maybe like the 10th day after they're born, babies can be a little bit restless, drinking a lot. There's a special name for it. I put it in the screen. You can Google it. Um, so maybe avoid like from day nine until day 11, doesn't mean that the baby is like that on the 10th day, it can be. So if you have a lot of babies coming in and they're very restless and they just wanna drink the whole time and be held, maybe they were all around 10 days old, try photographing a baby who is 14 days old or maybe even 21 days old. And maybe you'll realize that that is a lot easier. So most of my babies are between 12 and 21 days old, uh, but it also depends on when they were born, if they were born 
you know, a few weeks before their due date. We can do it up till, you know, when they're a month old. If they were born um, two weeks late and they're super happy campers, they have a good birth weight, they already gained a lot of weight, they can regulate their own temperature. We can also do it maybe on the eighth or ninth day. I, I would say I could also do it on the 10th day. I'm not scared of the 10th day, but it can be an explanation of why your babies are maybe a little bit restless. What can also make a difference is maybe the time of day when you're photographing the baby. A lot of babies have like a little bit of a hard time in between dinner and the time you want to go to bed as a parent. So maybe it's like as soon as you put the dinner on the table ready to go and eat, the baby starts being a little bit fuzzy, wants to be hell, is maybe crying a little bit. So I don't do photo sessions at the end of the afternoon. The baby has already experienced so much during the day and they just are not feeling it. So my sessions usually start at 10 in the morning from 10 until 12 or from like 1 until 3 in the afternoon. So maybe the time of day works as well. And I love to have a lot of daylight here in the studio. So that's not a reason why I do it during the day. Let's go to tip number six. Um, stick to natural poses, especially when you're just starting out, starting out with newborn photography. I assume that you know about photography, you photograph in the manual mode, you have good equipment, you know about aperture, shutter speed, you know about your ISO, you know about you know your white balance, you've attended a workshop where you got to pose, photograph a real baby, so you prepared well, uh, but still you feel like babies are waking up very easily or they don't want to go to sleep. Just stick to very like natural, simple poses. Don't get too hard on yourself. Parents will love the photos of their baby. When they see their baby is relaxed, the light hits their face beautifully, the colors are beautiful, coordinated, the materials are, you know, just making the whole image a piece of art. Maybe they don't want to have a froggy pose or a taco pose or a potato sack pose. Maybe just the, the bum up pose or like lying on the side or maybe just lying on the back and like wrapped. Keeping it simple, why not? We don't have to do things because other photographers are doing it, because other photographers are telling us that we should do it. We are delivering a service to the parents who wanna have beautiful photos of their own little babies to cherish forever. So let's do that. Let's take beautiful photos of their babies to cherish forever. Make sure the baby is safe, always happy, comfortable, relaxed, Maybe not the fancy poses, but maybe just on the beanbag, lying on the side, lying on the back, taking close-ups of their hands, their feet, their eyelashes, um, just making beautiful photos. Um, take it easy. Next tip that can help is like petting like their bum, which sounds a little bit weird. Let me get my doll. So here we have my little baby doll. Uh, what can help for a baby is like really softly like petting them on the on the back. But what helps what I notice a lot is like petting them on the bum a little bit. They're wearing their diaper, but um, that can help to get them to sleep. And first, I didn't know why. I just did it like intuitively, instinctively. I don't know, with my own babies, I would hold them like this and just like touch their bum. Um, and later someone told me it makes a lot of sense because the baby is usually in the belly, like upside down. And then the heart is like beating against their bum so they feel that so when you hold them like this during the session it's a familiar feeling that will maybe help them to fall asleep another tip maybe softly like rubbing the area between their eyes like down to their nose or really softly on their temples I usually use like this part of my finger like this part so like this that can help another tip is just take your time um, so yeah, if the baby is just not having a good moment, then maybe, you know, give it back to the parents and just tell them, okay, we're just going to take a 10 minute break. Maybe just hold the baby, you know, have their own blanket around it because it smells like home. I don't know. Uh, we're just going to have like a little break and we're going to try again in maybe 10 minutes. So just hold the baby. Just do what you normally do at home when the baby's a little bit fussy. Um, yeah, because I'm not going to have a crying baby on the beanbag and I'm not going to try and pose a cry crying baby on the beanbag. Baby's crying, baby's not happy and comfortable. So we don't take photos, we take a break and uh, wait and see what the baby wants. Maybe he's hungry, maybe he just wants to have a familiar face holding him. Um, so yeah, just be relaxed yourself. I know it's really hard to be relaxed if you're not feeling relaxed. Um, 
But yeah, if you're comfortable, confident, know what you're doing because you've attended workshops and you take it serious and you've studied photography and, you know, practiced a lot on adults, like taking photos, you don't have to think about your camera anymore, 100% focus on the baby, you are relaxed. Maybe before the session, drink a cup of tea. So just some very easy tips and tricks on how to get a baby maybe to sleep. Uh, I really hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. I love reading your comments. And then hopefully I can see you in the next video with more tips and tricks on how to photograph babies, newborns, cake smashes, dinner sessions, whatever. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.